incredibly excited to share with you Trotter 116th, a 20 year story in the making. Where are we in relation to Napa wine country? Because I've never been here before and it is out of the way. It is a little out of the way. It's um, This is a private little vineyard and we mm -hmm. are in the Coombsville district. Okay. Um, which is um, the eastern hillsides of Napa proper. And it's um, a coveted Cabernet vineyard location. So walk us through you know, your, your lineage, if you will, of cellar rat to now making your own wine. Well, yeah, so it started out in a tasting room of, of a big winery and was bored very quickly. <laughs> um, and so I got a job in a cellar, and then I worked my way up to cellar master, and that took me four years. Uh, and then I worked at another small family winery as an apprentice winemaker for about 10 years. Wow. And my mentor there uh, has been making wine for uh, 60 years. I think he has red wine in his blood, sure. or instead of blood. <laughs> right. Um, he said uh, that I need to do this on my own, that I needed to start making my own wine on my own. Uh, and serendipitously, uh, a vineyard presented itself in 2011, um, which was a really difficult vintage. And, oh, and yeah. they kind of just said, oh, you can have it. <laughs> okay. And uh, I turned it into a double gold medal winner wow. Cabernet. So now I'm kind of sourcing fruit from tiny little vineyards. I'm doing vineyard designated wines. I am not subscribed to a particular style of winemaking. Okay. So um, I'm just coming into a vineyard and I'm going to make it sing with its own personality. You know, every wine that I've made so far has its own recipe of barrels that I select. Mm. Uh, whatever's going to bring out um, the best properties of the vineyard. So I imagine that process is uh, the education that's ongoing because that's 20 some odd years of learning what barrels pair with what flavors, with what right. nuance. And so is there ever a moment we. we it has to be difficult because you get it done and you put it in a bottle and it could change two years, five mm -hmm. years, ten years. And so how do you monitor that and how do you not go crazy? Well, first of all, I drink a lot, so okay. that keeps me from going crazy. Good. Um, Duly noted. Quality control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to do a lot um, of testing. I monitor the, the wine once it's in a bottle and, and my, my best way to give me an indicator of the cellar potential and how it's going to change is I open a bottle and every night that I get home I'll drink an ounce of that bottle and then okay. I put the cork back in it put it back on a counter on the counter um, in a dark place and then um, I do it again the next night I take notes and I figure out where it is so it gives me a real uh, indicator as to when it'll fall out and come back huh. and okay. um, things like that good measurement and the name of your wine is Trotter 116th. I'm one of 16 kids ah. uh, out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, all of my siblings live within a 100 mile radius of my parents there. Okay. And uh, I was, um, I came out here and I knew this was where I was supposed to be and um, that's it. And why is it important to you to have vineyard designated wines? Um, geez, I, you know, it just feels like that's the way to do it. Um, I just don't wanna, I want the vineyards to be able to produce a wine um, that is um, true to the uh, Appalachian, true to their location mm -hmm. and, and their, their macro right. area, you know. Well, I think the proof is in the bottle, so should we taste some wine? Sure. Excellent. Absolutely. Just an unbelievable time with Stephanie. Amazing location. She knows exactly what she's doing. Small boutique vineyards, small production. Thank you so much for all your support.